bottom of the cell. And then adjacent to the eggs, there's going to be young larvae, which is floating in a pale blue fluid of brood food. Now, just to orient you so that you know where to look, in this sector right here, they're all embryos in all these cells, okay? Right here, we have larvae, okay? And they get older as you move this way. This queen started laying on this comb right here, okay? And it gets younger as you move out. You with me? All right, take a gander at that. Do your best to move it back and forth to catch the sun, what little there is, and have it angle down into the bottom of the cell. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to see this today because it's a, it's a tough day to find embryos, I'll tell you. You see them like little long, little, little cylinders, tiny little white cylinders. No. no I mean, you know, if I was just doing a routine examination to make sure this hive was queen right uh -huh. and healthy, I could have, as soon as I found that comb, I'd know I had a queen, more likely than not. I certainly had a queen within the last 72 hours, because that's how long the embryo stage lasts. Okay? So you don't have to go find the queen to know that your colony is most likely queen right. Hi, where, where, where's a, a queen cell? Do they have like a queen cell or something? The queen, the queen is reared in a queen cell. Um, but it stays there. Uh, or does it not? The, the vestige of the queen cell may remain. They may have a. Um, Those are fixing that. That water's fixing a hatch, aren't they? See how yeah. they pop mm -hmm. those. That's up? right. That's those are drone cells. See how they're domed up, and again, the size of the hexagon is larger. Yeah. Contrast that with the size of the brood cells right there. Is that frame, are those foundationless ones I see on the corner, what looks like that, is that a wire? Uh, that's just where I probably damage the foundation. I sometimes, the wax just... you know, there's a frame of foundation in the shop up there that fell to the ground, part of the foundation got knocked off, I can't sell it. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta use the once, well, once, the, the once the bees get on a honey flow, they'll fill in that gap. doing putting their heads into the comb. they're feeding the brood if it's young brood okay they're actually feeding the brood those larvae they will reprovision with brood food um, about every 30 minutes so the sometimes more egg, often oh I see the eggs now so the ones with eggs they don't have to do anything to right right now, this comb's got a queen on it more often than not is the queen in the hive there are exceptions to that rule but usually there's one queen per colony who can find her? She's on this face. There she is. Yep. That's her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? Everybody see? Oh, yeah. You find her? Mm -hmm. right, sir. What can you what can you say about this queen? It looks like she's got really small wings. One side has a clipped wing. Okay, so I, last time I was in this hive, I found this queen and I clipped her. So what does that mean? It means that I... So she can't fly. Yeah, that's right. Fly away. That's right. <coughs> if, this, if this queen tried to swarm, okay, she wouldn't be able to because she's not going to be able to fly again. Because I cut off those, that long wing on the right side. You see that? Oh, so that's how you keep them from swarming then? That's one way, yeah. The other, the other way is you make sure you put enough honey supers on them. Yeah. Pardon me? How do you grab her? Right now I'm holding her by the legs. When I first grab her off the face of the comb, I'll grab her like that. Off the, by the wings? Or if you're really gentle, you can grab her by the thorax. Yeah, you probably couldn't do that with gloves, could you? You can, but, but I mean, you, you have to be really so careful. careful yep. All right. So once I've found a queen like this, I usually like to return her to the hive in a place where I know I won't have to go looking for her again. 
and I'm, that I'm not going to disturb again. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just put it right down there. Okay. One of the advantages of going through the colony like I've just demonstrated by starting on this edge of the brood nest and working across is I'm lifting a comb out. I can actually look at the face of the adjacent comb. Okay? So you get you can accelerate your search for the queen if that's what you're trying to do. All right, so we're putting these other combs back in the hive. What do you ever go to the bottom hive? Sure, sure. Like I said, if the honey flow was on right now, I'd have gone to the bottom. I would have taken the empty super off the bottom. I would put this back down first. I'd put this second, then I'd put the empty modified on top. We're not quite there, but we can do it just to show you how it's done. Yeah, I didn't know you would get, once, once you had them stacked, I didn't know you would take them apart like that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the beauties of uh, Langstroth equipment is it's so much easier to manipulate the colony effectively. So when you're setting up your first, your hive originally, then how do you, like if this time of year, how do you set it up? I'll show you. Okay, so again, don't stand in front of the hive. Try to move off to the side because what will happen is even if the guard bees are not aggravated with you, if there's a lot of foraging activity going on, you're blocking the return flight of foragers to the hive. And they'll get lost, they'll get frustrated, and they'll take it out on you. Okay, so again, you know, pry the equipment apart gently, lift it off carefully, okay? And stand it on in like that if you wish momentarily don't do it for long like that because if that had honey in it and we exposed honey like that well that encourages robbing so there's a wax moth right there okay don't see any hive beetles down here which is encouraging oh there's one speak of the devil see it another wax moth see they're just lurking in the hive and they don't really do any damage until the hive's weakened what is it pardon me that this is the beetle. Yeah, this is the beetle be gone that we put oh, in there for them to trap hive beetles in. Oh, okay, okay. If we dig around in that, we're going to find um, dead hive beetles. See them? See the black things trapped in there, along with the other wax and debris. Anyway, when they get to that point, it's time to replace them. Here's one trapped in there. See that? Mm -hmm. There's one. All right. So putting it back together. Once I've gone to the bottom like that, I try to go ahead and clean all that debris off because that's a place for hive beetles to hide and wax moths to hide. And uh, we, we don't know this yet, but I'm, I'm willing to bet that this is the case. There was really not a lot of honey in that bottom deep. And I'm guessing that if there is honey in the hive, it's going to be right here. And there's probably also some brood, but we're going to look. Because if there's honey in this deep on the margins, I may want to move it down instead of the bottom one. Okay? Another beautiful comb of brood. What are these big tall ones here? Drone comb. And those are ready to. So this colony has turned all of its honey, for the most part, into bees. Alright? So it's ready for the honey flow to start. There's a little bit of honey here, but not much. Okay, see that? Mm -hmm. Can you see that that's liquid? Mm -hmm. There's honey there. There's obviously a lot of pollen right there. So this colony's got more resources uh, than the uh, first two we looked in. Probably because it's got way more foragers, right? But still, it's, uh, it's a colony in search of a honey flow the, um, in the middle of April, which is... Uh, which means the honey flow is late. What are the usual flow tags that generate? I, you know, I, I would like to see a colony this time of year storing honey. What plants are more typically that trigger the flows? The trees. This, yeah, this this part of the world they can get on a honey flow from Mexican persimmon. You know what that is? Uh, agarita. Makes great jelly. Yeah. My honey mosquitoes. No, oh, it is? Okay. Well, see, that's one of the 
big plants here waiting on. Okay, so look at all those bees. I didn't want to mash them. That's why I did that, right? So they were hanging on the bottom of the deep and I was going to move this to the bottom. So we're hopefully going to let them crawl out of the way. I also know that my queen is not among them, right? If I didn't know where my queen was, I'd be even more careful about how I'm handling this. But I'm going to put the deep down there, but I'm going to just very slowly lower it into position so they have time to crawl out of the way so I don't mash a lot of bees. Okay, wiggle it back down into place. And sometimes when they're all glommed up on the comb like that, instead of putting it in with them like that, I'll get the bees out of the way so I don't mash any, right? Did everybody feel like they could see embryos or not? Did y'all get a chance? Okay. Okay, so hold this out. Uh -huh. I mean, at, at comfortable reading distance, whatever that is for you. <laughs> and if you need to put it over that uh, yeah. pedestal, <laughs> <laughs> my heart may not be long enough. <laughs> right. So get it out there. And even if you can't see embryos, I want you to see the first instar larva, which is the next stage after the embryo. And those are the ones that have the little pale blue fluid in the bottom. Okay. And surrounding those, like all the way around them, are many, many cells that have embryos or eggs on them okay. on that face so they put that they put the blue liquid in the bottom of before they lay the egg no no they only start that once the embryo hatches into a first instar larva and they they detect that they're they're waiting for that to happen and as soon as that happens